Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Klaus. I'm account executive at BMW. And during the next 20 minutes, I'm going to tell you what keeps me at night during the nights. And it's not, it's not just um, here that, that we are in Las Vegas or any jet lag, but what really drives me is the business-driven value for the end customer by the cloud. So business-driven value for the end customer by the cloud. How about you, Jörg? What keeps you going? What keeps me going? Um, of course, our, our cars from BMW, they are very nice and I will show you uh, some of them just in a few minutes. Um, hello also from my side, my name is Jörg Krebs, I'm with BMW and I'm a cloud solution architect. I'm really excited to be here at the reInvent uh, in Las Vegas in front of this great audience. Thank you for joining us today in our session. Um, I can imagine that a lot of people here in the room dream of having an automated driving car. And of course, this will be a BMW. So let us give you a glimpse today on how we work on making your dream come true. Today at BMW, we already have great premium cars, like the 5 Series, which you can see here on the uh, left side, your left side. Um, the 5 Series actually has already advanced level 2 plus driver assistant functions, like the hands-off option up to 130 kph. You can use this on the highway, for example. And we also have the 7 Series, which you can see on the right side. And the 7 Series is also here in our expo. You can just walk over there, and then you can also have a look at the 7 Series. It's the latest version. And we just announced uh, this month that we will also have level 3 functions for our um, 7 Series uh, at, available at the beginning of next year. So level 3 really meaning that not uh, the driver has the responsibility, but the car takes over the responsibility from the driver fully. Um, but at BMW, we are actually never satisfied with what we have achieved so far. And therefore, BMW's product range, which has grown successfully over decades now, will be realigned on the basis of the so-called Neue Klasse. And let me present to you the Neue Klasse. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring a car up here on stage, but of course, I have it on a slide. With the BMW Neue Klasse, BMW basically reinvents itself. And it's a perfect play on words that we are now here at the AWS reInvent. To show you the significance of this initiative, I want to quote our CEO, Oliver Zipse, who said, the Neue Klasse means nothing less than the future of the brand BMW. This is our totally new generation of cars, which will start in 2025. And on the left side here of the uh, screen, you already see the BMW Vision Neue Klasse as it was presented to the public at the IAA in Munich in September this year. The BMW Neue Klasse combines and will be characterized by three key aspects which will dominate the mobility of tomorrow. Those are electrification, digitalization and circularity. It will have a completely redefined IT and software architecture. So some of you might say, okay, Jörg, what is Qualcomm on the slide in here? How do they fit into the picture? And actually, they fit in perfectly and are a very essential part. Because to develop this Neue Klasse, BMW has partnered with Qualcomm, a top-of-the-class tech company. They bring in the system on a chip, this is the Snapdragon Ride and our ECUs, as well as deep knowledge in the field of computer vision and computer vision software. And together with Qualcomm, we jointly develop the safety functions as well as level 2 plus and level 3 features. And this common, this common development, Qualcomm can even take and bring to the market as a product again. For the validation and verification of all of those safety functions the whole, and the whole system, we need to collect a huge amount of real-world data. We need to store this, process the data, and simulate it. For that, we actually build up our platform, and we will give you some insights about this in just a few minutes. And maybe some of you have already spotted, there on the, on the bottom left, there's also Capgemini. 
Capgemini is also one of our partners. They are actually operating, maintaining and further developing the platform we have built up so far. So coming now to simulation and reprocessing. Yeah? Those are very, two very essential parts in our whole two chain because we need to prove for all our functions that they are more reliable than a human driver. And as you can see here, a human driver uh, is, there's an accident with a, a fatal accident with a human driver every 780 billion kilometers. So our systems need to prove this and we cannot do this on a classical way, just driving over and over again and trying out the functions on the road. So we need to do this with a clever combination of simulation and reprocessing, where we use the data we have collected and then feed it into the system. Now I want to show you a little video about how we do this process end to end. At the beginning, you will see a test drive where we collect the data with a car and then this data gets ingested via copy stations into the cloud. Then the data gets visualized and the function developers can search for specific scenarios they are interested in and then they validate the scenarios with a reprocessing and later on also with a, with a simulation. But let's get started. There the car. Can you see him? Yes? Yep. The other card, the guys they are collecting the data. This is, as I said, the copy station where they ingest and they collect the data and it gets uploaded to the cloud, as you can see in here. This is one tool we have where the function developer then can really search for the scene he or she is interested in and then validate this. And now our reprocessing comes into the play. So for the reprocessing, you can see there are different objects being detected. And actually here on the left side, you will see a little arrow which gets then detected here. It was shortly seen. And then we need to adapt the functions based on this. You can also see that we do some labeling of the uh, and object segmentation of uh, data we collect via cameras. And, and here in uh, the last part of the video, we do, do our simulation. This is actually our automatic emergency brake. And this gets simulated also in, in real life, as you can see there, from different angles. There the car behind is driving to the other one and uh, the car needs to brake automatically. So I hand it over to Klaus now. Ah, you want me to do this first? Okay, then. Yeah, our requirements when building up this platform was actually uh, as I said, we have a very extensive need for this validation and verification because we cannot drive all the scenarios with all the functions all the time, so we need to do the reprocessing and the simulation. Um, this is really the, the basis of uh, our, our um, function approval. And we have chosen to build uh, this platform with AWS, but also, as I said before, Capgemini is a big partner for us in further developing the platform together with us. And we are collecting terabytes of data during one drive and could even, our fleet could even um, collect data up to one petabyte uh, totally uh, when we have the whole fleet running. We gather thousands of kilometers and we need to even simulate those millions of kilometers during the reprocessing and uh, simulation jobs. Okay, thanks Jörg. So what do we do to build a solution out of those requirements? So at the end of the day we assembled all experts uh, within Capgemini, so experts from ADAS, from data analytics, cloud platforms, from engineering, from Dev DevOps, and also from infrastructure, with the aim to really build a large-scale data-driven cloud platform. And um, do, by doing this, we, we did our big data and HPC technologies, and BMW asked, of course, to stay agile. And staying agile means we have a full DevOps approach to develop the platform and to develop also the applications. Um, to get this petabyte um, platform running, we have one certain or one special um, um, issue that means the worldwide data collection. So you can't go on test drive and collect all those data, as Jörg just said, so, so hundreds of, te uh, of terabytes or petabytes and just plug in the hotel at the evening and ingest the data. So this doesn't work. 
So what needs to be done is really you need a worldwide data logistics where you physically get the data to an access point, um, ingesting the data to the cloud, and considering also all legal constraints you have by data export control. And additionally, of course, you need to, to, to build on, on, on really network, physical network to get this done. And what is important for Capgemini is always the innovation and the sustainability part, so a future-proof solution. Now, on the right side, you see the, the data logistics coming in. So here, all the shipment, the fleet tracking, so you know where, where your fleet needs to be and where you, where you get, get the new cartridges in, your car handling and so on, and put this data then into the copy stations to the cloud. Yeah, what you can see here in the middle is that we use the AWS infrastructure. And on top of this, we build up the space platform together with AWS covering different aspects like the cloud room provisioning, uh, network and security, the FinOps part. And even on top of this, we have a whole data management layer which orchestrates uh, the data and the processing of the data throughout all of the different, as we call it, realms. So those are different applications. But even sit then on top of this, and as you can see here, we have the ingest again. Uh, we do also some signal extraction, of course, and feed this then into the simulation and reprocessing process. This is also what I showed you before in the video. In the end, uh, there's also this data portal. This is where the, um, the developer then can really search for the scene he or she is interested in and then feed this back into the whole process. Yeah. So, and really supporting here our AD function developer and um, the platform developers. We have here two, de two DevOps um, areas, so the platform team and the application teams. And currently we are running seven parallel DevOps teams worldwide, distributed worldwide, um, to keep the platform updated, to keep the applications updated and to serve this. And of course, we are very closely collaborating with our partners from AWS. And one thing I haven't mentioned so far, and this is, this is hidden over here, the, the hardware in the loop test benches. So you need hardware in the loop, and the hardware in the loop uses power and uses space. So we thought there must be something better. We need to, to have a better idea how to cope with that. And what we came up with a solution to say, why don't we put hardware in wind turbines? At the moment, at the very beginning when we suggested this, everyone asked us, what is wrong with you? What, 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 what are you doing with the wind turbines? But the more we, we discussed and find out, we had a partner or we have a partner where we can do this. And um, just even if you, if you consider there's no, no wind and no sun, we are still doing 95% better than if you use the classical data centers with the current um, electrical power mix we have in Germany. And one additional point which is important, you don't use any space in Frankfurt anymore. You use space somewhere really on the outskirts and the space is there anyhow. So if we are going two steps back and think, okay, what, what is this solution? Why is, why is this such such important thing also for BMW but also for Capgemini? And this is what we talk, this is intelligent industry really at its core. An intelligent industry for Capgemini means the following. We have here the engineering part. Engineering, where you say, okay, you need to collect all the data. That means driving around the complete world, getting the data ready, ship the data, as we just said, and um, operate the hardware in the loop and do the verification validation. You have the complete infrastructure part. Um, here with the IT part, infrastructure, DevSecOps, cloud security, and the data at scale. and what I said, what keeps me awake during the night is the business value for the end customers. And we don't do this on our own, so, so that's not just a Capgemini game. We do this, of course, with BMW, we do this with Qualcomm, and we do this with AWS, really in a partner ecosystem. And last but not least, what is important for us in a very sustainable way. So thank you very much, and I'm open for questions, and Jörg and myself will be here for the next couple of minutes to discuss. Thank you.